Ukraine's energy infrastructure has again come under Russian attack. A wave of missile strikes have struck 10 regions, including Kyiv. Well, this was the aftermath of two blasts in the capital. It left 80 percent of residents with no running water and 350,000 apartments with no electricity. In Kharkiv and other cities, residents were forced underground when the strikes hit. 13 people were injured in 10 different regions across the country. Well, Kyiv says that Russia fired more than 50 cruise missiles and that it shot 44 down. Yuri Sak is an advisor to the defense minister. 18 different energy infrastructure objects have been struck by the Russian missiles in 10 different regions of Ukraine. And this ranges from the east of Ukraine, Zaporizhia south, Kharkiv in the north, all the way to the western Ukraine, Chernivtsi. So it was quite a massive, another massive missile strike by a terrorist state. They're targeting civilians uh, because uh, and our energy infrastructure because, of course, they are unable to achieve any military progress on the battlefield. And uh, they're trying to uh, break the Ukrainian will to defend ourselves by conducting these missile strikes and drone strikes. Well, seven of the 10 regions hit have been suffering power cuts affecting hundreds of towns. This map has been released by Ukraine's water management body in Kyiv, and you can see the huge number of water pump points affected by the strikes. Workers are trying to repair the damage, and officials are appealing for those with power to limit consumption. Still, however, the impact is being felt. In Kyiv, there are huge queues to fill up water bottles, Here's the mayor, Vitaly Klitschko. I have a feeling the Russian, uh, uh, Russian aggressors uh, want to freezing people in this winter. They uh, counted, they, they propose uh, himself as war against military, but right now have, uh, this war have directly impact in uh, civil population. They want to uh, make the people without uh, heating without water, without electricity. In the winter, they want to freeze the whole population in our hometown. So the mayor of Kyiv. Well, there has been damage outside of Ukraine as well. Russian strikes shot down by Ukraine have fallen on a village in neighboring Moldova. And according to the Interior Ministry, several houses were shattered. It's called it a flagrant violation of the international humanitarian law and says that attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure is causing enormous economic and social damage to the entire European continent. Well, today's wave of Russian attacks come two days after Russia's navy itself came under attack in Sevastopol. According to open source investigators, several drones struck a warship in the annexed Crimea at 4.20 in the morning. Now, Russia has blamed Ukraine, while Ukraine has called the Russian accusations a false pretext. And the fallout has been immediate. That same day, Russia pulled out of a UN-backed deal, allowing Ukraine to resume exporting grain from the Black Sea. This is a Kremlin spokesperson on why. When Russia talks about it being impossible to guarantee the safe passage of shipping in these areas, this kind of deal is, of course, barely feasible. And it takes on a different character, a much riskier, more dangerous one, and one without guarantees. Now, despite that warning, 12 more grain shifts left Ukraine today under the UN deal. Ten are carrying wheat destined for the Horn of Africa. But first, they'll have to head along the Maritime Humanitarian Corridor to Turkey, where they'll undergo meticulous inspection. It's a process that can take days and has led to this huge maritime traffic jam in Istanbul. Well, the grain deal was seen as a major diplomatic victory. Today, both the UN and Turkey, which brokered the deal, and Ukraine itself, have given their assurance that they will continue to implement it. Here's a spokesperson for the UN Secretary General. We've had more than 9 million metric tons of grain go out onto the global market. So this, this agreement is of tremendous importance in the developing world and frankly in the developed world as well because it impacts the price of grains at the wholesale level for everyone. So a lot to discuss. Let's cross over to Olga Malchevska from BBC News Ukraine. Olga, before we talk about the crane and the deal, where are we with the actual restoration of power and water in Kyiv and other places across Ukraine? 
Hello. So the latest what we know from Kiev is that at least 40 percent are still without electricity and water. And uh, Kiev city mayor Vitaly Klitschko said that the city authorities managed to restore a lot, but still, well, comparing to what was in the morning, it's quite, quite a lot. Because in the morning, as far as we heard from them, there were 80 percent of people in Kiev without electricity and water. And now we're hearing that there, there are 40 percent of people without electricity. And But it's difficult to say what, what what is the situation around all the Ukrainian regions, because it's quite difficult to get any statistics, difficult to get any access. And obviously, Ukrainian authorities ask journalists not to report about the details, because they are quite scared that Russia might use that information to recalibrate um, their weapon and to, to target the elect electricity facilities which Ukrainian authorities managed to restore. But it's a very difficult situation because, of course, when, when your mum was there in Kiev under, during the first attacks, conditions on the ground are really hard. Yes, they're extremely hard and my mom has just returned from Ukraine. I couldn't keep her for, she literally wanted to go back. As you know, probably many Ukrainian parents who were able to be evacuated from Ukraine, they, they really want to go back and my mom was one of them. She went back and then she found herself in a situation where she couldn't use electricity, water. So electricity was there for around two or three hours. And obviously Kiev was bombed and she had to spend a lot of time sitting in a cellar or in underground as many as many people in Kiev and other Ukrainian towns but uh, that is how the situation is looking like now and many people were queuing today to get some kind of water using the city buvets and that is that is quite dramatic and uh, the mayor of Kiev called that situation a genocide which Russia is committing on Ukraine so he's called it genocide and um, of course we understand you know your mum wanted to go but she is back safely now Olga let's focus in on the grain itself uh, the movement of the grain Russia's given a stark warning where is the grain now how much is stuck how much is left already well we've heard about 12 ships yesterday we heard from Ukrainian side that there were 218 ships blocked um, in the Black Sea and they were not able to leave and uh, today we're hearing that the situation is slightly moving. Ukrainian President Zelensky said that Ukraine would participate in the grain deal no matter what Russia is doing and he asked um, international partners to calm down Russian rhetoric. Russia from its side accused Ukraine of using the safe corridor for fighting and we also heard from Ukrainian side that today Russia targeted two civilian ships in, in the Black Sea and at least two civilians um, were reportedly killed. Well the situation remains quite difficult but as far as we know during uh, due to this deal Ukraine managed to export at least 9.5 million tons of grain and during this year Ukraine managed to export over 12.9 million tons of grain but still comparing to the previous year it's just 66.5 percent comparing to the figures last year.